this is uh, Jumping Jack Flash. We just looked at brown sugar, and brown sugar it was a uh, 2015 um, neo, you know, neonate from Ella and Dupree. This is um, another neonate from Ella and Dupree. They were both red neonates. This is a male. You can see he's two and a half years old. He's, he also has a lot of black, but he's got a lot of other stuff. I mean, calico, this thing screams calico to me. This is what I thought calico would be when I first got Dupree and uh, I haven't been disappointed, obviously. So yeah, again, you have these really bright yellow diamonds coming through, um, really nice bright yellow towards the bottom, and then this dark patterning at the top. And this one, to me, really is your most reminiscent of the Calico Jean. Oh. I, I, I think this one is most, because it's kind of an even spread of the different colors that you see with green tree pythons. Whereas, you know, we pulled out, um, uh, I think it was brown sugar with all the black, and um, I can't remember the names of the other ones, but uh, the one with all the yellow, you ghost, know, but yeah. ghost. But, you know, with calico, what I was explaining before, you guys see all these different colors, you know, it's just, it's, it's pixelated. And that's what, you know, the original um, animal that this gene started with was a computer chondro. The whole reason that he called it the computer chondro is because of these scales. They, it reminded him of the pixels on a on a, a computer screen, and so you know, and then you you know it, it just b continued from generation to generation. And you know, as you guys can tell, it's a pretty potent gene because this animal is you know was it 20, 30 years in, and it's maybe around 20 years. I think yeah. we're we're getting close to 20 years, and it's uh, still displaying that quintessential calico look which are all these different colors yep totally reminds me of a computer like the yeah. the way that the especially old computers like right 16. right yeah. <laughs> totally does um yeah. what a beautiful animal i love the blue here mixed with the yellow on the tail i love that yeah yeah he's got every color i can imagine pretty much in there at some point other he doesn't have that red that ghost has but other than that and one thing I did want to show you guys, as you guys have seen, uh, you've seen the interaction that we've made with these animals. Um, there's, there was a stigma for a long time, and there still is by folks that don't work with chondros. They think that they're aggressive, that they're bitey. Um, granted, the bite's not pleasant. I haven't bit by them before, but these animals are all super placid. I mean, he, they're, they're just curious. They're touching his face. You know, they're checking, checking out their surroundings. They're not trying to bite at all. So. You know, we've taken out four or five animals and every one of them has been extremely placid. So that whole like stigma that they're aggressive and defensive and they just want to bite, you guys can see that's bullshit. So in the wild guys, these things, there's a lot of predation. They see something that's much larger than them and they think that they want to get, you know, that they're about to, to be eaten. And they also associate uh, probably a negative experience. You know, they're getting pulled out of a perch, you know, Maybe they're not being handled gently. These animals have been bred in captivity and they've already associated the difference between Eddie, their keeper, and prey. They know that he's not gonna harm them. And so that's one thing that's really cool about these animals. You breed them and they can actually, I think that they can actually distinguish between you know what's dangerous and what's not. And they know that he's not gonna hurt them in any way. So what are we looking at with this one? So this is Malagueta, this, which is the name of a chili pepper. <laughs> that was from the 2014 clutch of Lucille Dupree. And this one was my favorite when it first hatched out. Um, and he is also very, you see a lot of that calico in him. He's got really that really nice green shade. And then obviously these, these um, yellow diamonds, a lot of black still in there. A lot of blue that I don't know if will come through or not, but in natural light, it's very obvious there's a lot of blue. And then all, all of that yellow is still coming through. So he's three and a half years old. He's a sibling to Ghost, which we showed earlier, and he's doing great. So this, that's Fatali, and she is, um, she's an eating machine, but she's, she looks just like her mother. I mean, you can see that really, and they're all, the, all three of these were red neonates. You remember? No, it was a long time ago when you guys were clutch mates, but... They're from the same clutch. Same clutch. So this is a good difference between a male and a female. Yeah. You want the males to stay smaller, you want them to stay lean. Females, you want to get them a little bit bigger without overfeeding them so that they have those fat deposits for 
for the eggs and whatnot because it takes such a toll on them. And you can see, yeah, there's, there's a big difference. Now I do feed only mice to yep. my chondros. I don't feed rats to any of them. I didn't either. And yeah. I know there's some debate there, there but, some I, debate, but, but I, I just felt like it was better for the animal because that was kind of Rico's opinion and, um, you know, who am I to question it? But also it, it seems to work for me. I don't have a lot of problems. And so, uh, I don't have a lot of problems with overweight animals, as you mentioned earlier. And, um, and you haven't really had any prolapses for the exception of the one. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. so I just stick with what works and you know, I'm not, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. It's not my judgment whether it's good or bad. It's just, if it works for me, I'm going to keep doing it. Um, but yeah, so these two are siblings and you can see between these two and then ghost, they're all from the same clutch. They're all red neonates and they all look completely different from each other which is uh, just something that I love. Yeah, yeah, I love that about these, the calico yeah. genetics. This is Gaia, my female black milk snake. I have a pair of black milks. Uh, the other one's serious, serious black. They are about five years old. Yeah, about six years old. They start off when they're young, red and black banded, mm -hmm. and look very much like, um, like a coral snake or right. something. And um, every shed, they get blacker and blacker and you can see this rainbow this iridescent rainbow underneath i love this about them anyways they come from i believe the jungles or the mountains of peru they live in a cold area so i don't heat them at all um, their cages aren't heated at all and they're fine with that temperature just the normal temperature and i believe my I haven't read this, but I'm pretty sure this is what people say, is that they're they're black because when they're in the sun, they need to absorb as much yeah, for sure. heat as possible because they don't get a lot of sun. You know, the hard part of this is you gotta cool them down. And I don't know how to cool them down because they don't have heat in the cage. I've been keeping the window open. We'll see if that helps because this room gets really warm. So I might have yeah. to keep them somewhere else. But yeah, you can see the size of this thing. Yeah, I mean, she's easily six feet, right? Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I don't know if you can get all that in the frame, but she's a big girl. She's a big girl. Really pretty.